Like, why do we use Bayesian inference in planting space? Yeah, I could say uncertainty matters, and the, kind of the only real way to get uncertainty is through Bayesian uh, methods and Bayesian modeling. And um, when you have like this such massive um, product which want to kind of contain all knowledge, you're going to have some kind of noise and uncertainty, and we want to capture that. Mm -hmm. And Bayesian inference is just this tool which allows us to do this. Um, it's complex, but uh, and it can be complicated mm -hmm. and complex and complicated. But yeah, I think I think also like very nice thing is that you can um, kind of like divide um, the modeling section right of your problem. So the more intuitive modeling uh, from the actual calculations, the inference you lose, you use later on, right? So you can um, first talk about like yeah, what is like uh, what do we want to know? Then like. Um, how do we want to calculate it and, and make it accessible to more people in this in this way, right? Because not everybody has to understand like the nitty gritty details of the implementation. Um, if you, for example, know a bit more about like statistics and probability theory. Kind of. yeah, so in my opinion, Bayesian inference is not the only way to handle uncertainty. Because you can just run maximum likelihood estimate and you still handle uncertainty in some way. But it's a good way to avoid overfitting. Also, yeah, it's especially like, for big data. It's like also a way. I mean, a way to view to look at Bayesian inference is that you do some sort of maximum likelihood with uh, with a regularization. With the, yes. Right, like yes. the prior regularizes your your likelihood, and and you uh, usually give give you better, more stable results for that. What do you think are the big challenges that we face, in your opinion? Performance. <laughs> in what sense? <laughs> com com uh, computational performance. Yeah, that's true. Inference is not the most uh, kind of um, quick way to. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, often you rely on simulations, yes, right? Yes. Um, and and they they need time, and so maybe you know you start with uh, implementing something in a. In a, in a quick way, right? Uh, so the implementation is quick, but then the simulation is slow, and then you can gradually improve it um, so that you get yeah better runtime performance, like quicker results, kind of. Yeah, that's generally the problem of Bayes, right? You want to just not have this one final answer, but you want an infinite amount of answer. And <coughs> this is what makes it harder to scale. Like when you have more data, more, um, more complex model, everything just becomes more and more complex, much much more complex than just having one point to look for. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's one of the big challenge. The other challenge, I would say, is uh, in this Kamchatka process we, we work on, mm -hmm. it's such a complex beast and there's so many elements, right? Like um, to actually formalize and to represent it via model correctly is really hard, it's really hard to understand what's happening, it's really hard to um, make sure that things are happening right. Right, so, so I think, uh, so one of the bigger issues, which is kind of implicit here, is that we, we are not just simply modeling like one model, right? Mm -hmm. Like we, we are dealing with potentially many different problems in, inside of, you know, depending on the specific case that we are handling, and that requires us to think in, in very general methods, right? Uh, which, which I feel is, is one of the bigger challenges we, we deal and it's one of the ways we actually need to interact with other parts in the in the company as well, other systems in, in, in Kamchatka, right? Yeah, I mean, so we, we have this one kind of big overarching model that kind of encompasses a lot of smaller models. Um, are there any challenges that that kind of brings to the table of um, sort of especially doing it in an optimal way of um, filtering down the information or yeah. sampling methods. I mean, you can view it like if you compare it to um, like how maybe Bayesian inference is used like in more usually, right? It's like usually maybe you have like a model and you want to infer parameters of this model, for example, or you want to answer um, some queries. But now we actually we go like even on a one more meta level, right? Because we ask, oh, we actually don't know what the model is itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To talk in more like concrete terms, we don't have concrete definition of the likelihood. We don't know how much our output is actually correct. And it's this incredibly complex task to build the whole pipeline so that we can arrive at something which is maybe approximately correct 
uh, in the so sense. The, the whole reason why we don't really have, we don't really know what the likelihood is, is because it really depends on what query the user is sending, right? So if the user is asking about a, you know, a multiplication, then we might, we have numbers. But if the user is asking about well, know, whatever language uh, characteristic, then we may have a totally different type. Yeah. And it's also like the uh, like what the user is asking. I mean, you first you have to understand kind of like you pr have to process uh, the question which could be asked like in in just natural language right you can just uh, add a sentence and you it's even you start there like you have uncertainty of understanding uh, what the actually user wants right so you need like some some sort of natural language processing right um, yeah actually i think natural language is a very nice case here because it also relates to category theory and how that works in our system right so what do you think yeah, the, the, I mean, there's a lot of links that um, that cross between all the different areas. Like with category theory, there's some um, natural language processing interpretation of category theory, and also um, some Bayesian methods that we use for the NLP stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, what we we want to get from some language that the user inputs, and we want to structure it in a way that um, our system can handle, um, and somehow represent it mm -hmm. um, in hopefully a way that um, resembles how people think mm -hmm. um, and then how, how people build a mental model in their brain of you know what is the model that I'm trying to do yeah um, so for example a, a question like what, what is the color of a tree okay right so you, you, you build a model of um, so these trees are green but a, a mixture of different colors okay um, but you build a model of what, what is it typical tree look like okay so let me let me pick that up so now uh -huh. we have this model right so what is the color of a tree how do we solve it what, what specific methods can we use to solve this yeah I mean like we are working on, on different things um, uh, one is to, to use like uh, methods right which are uh, well established uh, so for example you were working on factor graphs um, and, and variational bit. <laughs> and variational friends right yeah kind of um, <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know, what's your experience with, with uh, this implementation? Um, it's, um, it's supposed to be uh, quick, I mean, yeah. in terms of inference. Uh, let's see how it goes so far. And, and how do you see it fitting with, uh, with, the whole, with this whole setup? Yeah, that relates to the performance issues I have mentioned, because uh, you can do everything with sampling, essentially. Mm -hmm. like, in principle everything but then you need infinite computation power so in 1950s Bayesian inference was also something which uh, was questioned in terms of uh, whether it's a computationally effective method or not because you have after all to, to, to take those massive integrals to properly marginalize stuff and etc now we we are capable of uh, running Bayesian inference on modern computers in an efficient way so at least uh, it makes the problems tractable in a sense and they can be computed in a finite uh, number of steps yeah. Mm. Uh, but uh, yeah it's still a kind of a question of how far can you go in uh, uh, that process uh, so my, my, might be you need some justifications of the procedure or my, my, might be not but anyways uh, Bayesian inference uh, allows you to um, update the model uh, in a reasonable way. So, I, for, for, for now, I think uh, that's um, something which uh, all, all, all the scientists came up from different areas, especially from neuroscience. There's some like, works which state yeah. that the brain works uh, in the sense of Bayesian inference. Um, uh, like it has an initial model and then it justifies this model based on observations and uh, yeah that's something which pop popped up like uh, 300 years ago. <laughs> like you were mentioning factor graphs which is one of the directions we're working on but then the other big way of solving models is sampling which is very expensive but we can do it right and um, in sampling one of the methods we are using right now is important sampling yeah. but there is a difference to traditional important sampling and this actually relates to what yeah. you said earlier it's right? likelihood right we don't exactly know so in important sampling what you would normally do is like you would sample from a distribution and hope that it fits more or less another distribution mm -hmm. get some weight so basically every point you get is more or less likely yeah and then you combine all this and get some kind of big answer that you will then actually provide to the user yeah 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 um but normally what you have is like a proper distribution and another 
proper distribution that you can evaluate on, which we don't have at all. So we actually have to work with um, approximation on this. Yeah. Um, and this is also one, one of the yeah. challenge because how can we make sure that this is correct? How do we make sure that we have enough samples? How do we make sure that we converge to an actual answer that makes sense? Right? Yeah, yeah. I think another topic. Sorry, you can. Um, but, but this is kind of quite very close to how people think, right? Yeah. You, you you build a mental model and then you don't have any way of actually checking how exactly. correct your yes. answer is. Yes. It's like when you are uh, when you are a child, you are uh, studying to play chess. You kind of don't enumerate all the combinations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. You you need some yeah. because you can do that, but then you need infinite uh, amount of time. Yeah, yeah. So the, 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 this is actually, I think it's one of the bigger streams we are also working on, like, yeah, you can imagine like a huge prior over the world, Yes. Mm. but that, yes. That, that doesn't work, yes. that mm -hmm. doesn't work, right? So we need to really work hard in order to have like a reasonable prior that offers enough information, right? Which is one of the ways mm -hmm. we are working. And speaking about this prior, there's yeah. actually this additional challenge, right? Like, we, category theory help yeah. us to create some kind of general model, yeah. yes. which sometimes evolve already uncertainty, right? Yeah. So what do we do here? Like how can we, how do we learn the weights? Like how, when sometimes multiple paths are possible, it's how do we learn the weights? Yeah, there are cases where you might not have a concrete definition for for a, for a question, right? Like in the, in the case that Ivan was mentioning earlier, like what is the color of a tree? Well, there might be possible, different possible ways of answering mm. this question, right? Um, this is precisely how Bayesian inference helps us, right? We may have, I don't know, different ways of answering this, this question and we leverage that in the data points we have. So actually, what do we use for leveraging? Like, because Bayesian inference usually in the classical, classical setting, we have some observed variables. Yeah. We have some thing a bit unknown that we're actually interested in. Yeah. And in this case, the unknown is actually this answer we're really looking for. I mean, it's also like the, the query itself. We don't yeah. know, right? Uh, mm -hmm. what, what would be asked mm -hmm. um, and stuff. And so like for learning, um, it's a bit like abstract, but you could say uh, what we actually would like to do is to, to, to marginalize um, over all possible queries, right? So like uh, considering them all at once. Consider the you consider the query given by the user, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we want all to consider... All the possible things he could have Yeah, said. exactly. We would, we would like to consider all possible queries a user could ask at once, right? And um, marginalize this out of the probability equation um, so that we can update or like um, optimize our, our weights, um, our, our parameters of the mm. probability distributions so why, why accordingly. Do you, why do you say weights? Because we are talking about weights, but... Yeah. <laughs> it, it would, like, I it's more like like the parameters, right? It's, it's right. what we cannot do. Um, yeah, because so we have to consider uncertain ob uh, observations, um, which is a, yeah a new topic, I would say. Even you're you're talking about usual sta usual Bayesian statistics, and what I find interesting is that we mostly have a background in machine learning and like this traditional artificial intelligence. And for what I find another really big challenge in what we do is the data is completely heterogeneous like we have all kind of possible data composite data so yeah. we have like this car which is a mix of wheels and something else like which is also described in category for it pretty well yeah yeah uh, we have but even to the most basic level we have strings uh, integers real numbers and somehow we still use them as they are yeah. and when you study Bayesian, Bayesian uh, inference and other things, you're just used to work with continuous and maybe, if you're a bit crazy, inter <laughs> integer number. Like that's a, yeah. that is, if you feel a bit I mean, uh, adventurous. We, we even have our own types, right? Like we have a tree, we have a color. Yeah. Like, you know, and here, here exactly, like you just keep right. having, and we keep, not only we have this like, we don't transform this type, we actually keep them this way yeah, yeah. till the late, last moment, but we actually play in between them. And actually was this incredible challenge because whole fields are about this and we just try to tackle this on our own which is uh, quite remarkable sorry <laughs> <laughs> that touched me <laughs> that, you touched that, that was emotional <laughs> <laughs> it's okay <laughs> so what's your favorite sampling <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite sampling algorithm <laughs> it's uh <laughs> HMC, okay, that's taken. <laughs> Daniel, Daniel. I, I don't know, like general, <laughs> general Metropolis Hastings, I would say. Oh, yeah, like, that's, because that's it's too easy. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just yeah, very generic and you can do a lot of things. Yeah. Right? It's nice, super, yeah. still powerful. SMC. SMC, yeah. sequential Monte Carlo. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I would go with Gibbs because yeah, Gibbs is like this just clean, clean thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. You'll come last. That's a hard. Yeah, you're, you're with, leaving with me with analytical priors. You have to. Yeah. You, you, have, you have to go with Flat Glass. No, actually, no. Actually, I'm gonna say important something. I think it's <laughs> the, the minimalism. I think it's beautiful.